Somebody asked me about two months ago, if I would have known how hard this was going to be getting into this, would I have still done it? Absolutely not. <laughs> but it has been the most fulfilling thing. And now that I'm doing it, there's nothing else I would absolutely do. Um, this has been the most rewarding job I've ever done. But with being able to make differences, both in people's lives that are struggling and at their wits end on what to do with certain animals that, are, that have behavioral problems or that they just don't understand how to take care of, and the individual birds and creating relationships with them and watching them come in scared and tired and watching their personalities bloom. It's the, the, the biggest cause that I've ever truly believed in. As far as with saving the birds, because I get people like, why, why birds? And it's because not very many people are doing this and there's not really a voice for these guys. As loud as they are, they're kind of voiceless creatures with the, the commodity of them. But also, they are the only animal on the face of the planet that actually occupies every continent and holds almost each biome from swamps to desert to Antarctica. They're all intricate in each of the ecosystems so heavily that when we're talking about the planet that we live in and we're able to prosper in, birds were the ones that kind of developed it. And so if, we're, if we were to focus in on saving the birds, we'd end up saving the planet ecologically. And so I'm like, yeah, birds. <laughs> So the birds come to me because there's actually a pretty big crisis of unwanted birds, especially in the Midwest, um, where a lot of people in the 80s ended up buying birds, but these birds will live like 60 to 80 years, and so they're outliving a lot of people, along with birds that are impulsively bought, um, end up not being cared for very well, and then you end up seeing a, a multitude of behavioral problems. And so a lot of the birds that we get in come in with uh, aggression and self-mutilation and antisocial behaviors, and we actually start working on um, physical and mental rehabilitation to create a stable environment for the health and safety of the bird. I try to create a place, not just to take in the birds, but to educate people that are struggling with caring for birds because nobody, nobody adopts or buys a bird to torture an animal. They just, there isn't a lot of information out there on how to care for them. And so I'm trying to do my best to set a good example and uh, offer accessible educational processes to actually live and cohabitate with a bird. Because they don't make very good pets, but they make fantastic companions. So there's a lot of hormone fluctuations that a lot of people aren't A, aware of, and be equipped to actually handle and understand. So that's why we actually have them on a 12-hour uh, cycle, an eight to eight, and that's to A, regulate their hormones, but also to keep it on a routine because of the issues with communication that we have with the birds, that if you're on a routine, it's a lot easier for them to recognize what's going to happen and not be afraid, and to, the communication structure just gets a whole lot better. Um, and this is where even with new volunteers coming in, the first month, it's like, do not engage with the birds, let them understand you, be a calm, environmental difference. Let them understand who you are before you engage so that A, we're able to elicit attention and interaction when it's appropriate so that they're not screaming for attention or being aggressive for attention, that they can be patient on the times that it's going to happen. We have our um, Bird Behavior Solutions Program. It's just a small counseling program that I was doing through COVID um, where people with bird behavior problems, whether it be from plucking to not, to dietary changes, to biting, that yeah, I would love to, I can't take on every bird, that I would like to keep the birds in their home. Cause like I was saying, actually them being in a safe and secure environment, a stable environment is one of the healthiest things I can do. And so I would like to help people keep their birds in their homes and, and actually work on, on the healthiest way to, to build a habitat for them. Cause they are smart enough to adapt into the homes that we create for them. It's just not always the healthiest. And so working towards getting more healthy interactions and healthy behaviors inside the home for individuals and creating that like 
fulfilling relationship is, is one of the key goals that I have. Celebrating vibrant people, captivating places, and remarkable things. This is Living West Michigan.